Our planet's history is a vast timeline that we know a lot less about than we would like to admit. There are so many things that we don't know about yet, and infinitely more things that we may never even find a trace of. To really put into perspective what I'm trying to say here, let's do some real quick math. Today, scientists have categorized around 2 million different taxonomic species, not including microbes and bacteria. However, it is estimated that there are over 8.7 million non-microbial and non-bacterial species alive today. But the life we see around us today is estimated to be less than 0.1% of all life that has ever existed. If you do some quick math and look at some estimates by scientists, then you can find that it is estimated that over 5 billion species have become extinct in our planet's history. Now, 5 billion is a very big number, probably way bigger than most of you realize. The even crazier part, though, is that only around 250,000 different extinct species have been discovered, meaning that we have probably only discovered around a 500,000th or 0.00005% of all extinct species. Fortunately, though, there are those 250,000 that we do know about, thanks to these very rare things called fossils. Fossils, for the few of you who don't know, are remains or evidence left behind by prehistoric organisms. Now, when I say the word fossil, I bet the first thing that comes to mind for most of you are dinosaur skeletons, like the ones you see at museums. Fossils like these usually occur from a process called petrification or permineralization, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that isn't the only type of fossil. There are six different main types of fossilization, those being permineralized fossils, mold fossils, cast fossils, carbon films, preserved remains, and trace fossils, all of which I will be going over in this video. Now, there are a few subcategories and parent categories to these, but I'd prefer to just go over what I'm now calling the simple six for simplicity and coherence. So without further ado, here are the six different types of fossilization. Permineralized fossils are probably the most well-known fossils, mostly thanks to the dinosaurs, and also somewhat to the fact that permineralization is the most common form of fossilization. Permineralization almost only preserves hard parts of organisms. Because of this, it is usually only animal bones and shells that get preserved, although some plant material can be fossilized in this way. The process occurs as follows. The organism dies, almost always by or in a body of water. The organism is then swept up by the body of water. Over time, the soft parts of the organism decay away, leaving only the hard parts. Then, if conditions are just right and the remains are submerged in water for long enough, sediment-filled water will begin to fill the pores in the plant matter, bones, or shell. The sediment in the water hardens, turning into rock. After a while, the organic remains decay, leaving behind the hardened stone, which has morphed into the shape of the remains. The organic remains have, over time, been turned into rock. This process, also known as petrification, is how we get most of our fossils today. Most of the time, if you see a dinosaur skeleton, a fossilized shell, or fossilized plant matter that isn't fake, then that is an example of permineralized fossils. Despite how relatively common permineralization is, however, it is still extremely rare. A lot of things have to go exactly right. For example, if the organism doesn't die at least in range of a body of water, then that organism doesn't have a very likely chance of being permineralized. Even if an organism were to die in the exact center of a body of water, then there's still no guarantee. If the remains aren't submerged long enough, often for thousands of years, they won't be petrified. That's not even mentioning the fact that even the hard parts could be taken by scavengers. Then the fossils have to survive geological processes for thousands to millions of years so it can be discovered by humans. What does and what does not get fossilized based on certain conditions is a concept known as preservation bias, which I won't be going too in-depth about here because I already have in another video, which you should go check out. Anyways, let's move on to the next type of fossilization. Mold fossils and cast fossils go hand in hand, so I'll be talking about them in the same video segment, even though they are technically two different types of fossilization. Mold fossils quite literally are molds. These types of fossils form whenever an organism dies and ends up being buried in sand, mud, or clay. Over time, these materials harden into rock around the remains, creating an imprint in the shape of the organism in the rock. Then the remains decay, leaving the imprint behind. Similar to how mold fossils are literal molds, cast fossils are literal casts. 
Cast fossils occur when materials such as mud or clay fill a mold fossil and harden, creating a cast in the shape of the organism. Like most forms of fossilization, molding cast fossils are usually only good for preserving the harder parts of the organism because the softer parts decay away before the fossil can form. Examples of mold in cast fossils include most trilobite and shell fossils. This ammonite fossil is a good example of both a cast and mold fossil. As you can see, the fossil on the left is an imprint from an ammonite shell, while the one on the right is a cast of the same ammonite shell. Carbon film fossils are a very unique form of fossilization, and probably my favorite of the simple six. Carbon films form when the dead organism is buried by sediment. As they get buried deeper and deeper, the pressure and heat increase. The intense conditions cause liquids and gases to be forced from their body. When the organism decays, a thin layer of carbon in the shape of the organism is left on the stone. It is almost like a very detailed carbon drawing on the rock. Carbon films only work for small organisms such as insects and plants. They are also some of the rarest fossils, mainly because if you don't split a rock containing one just right, then you may never even know that it's there. I really think fossils like these are super cool and unique, and I'd definitely like to own one someday. Trace fossils are different in a sense because they don't preserve the actual organism, or a part of them, or even a thin carbon drawing of them. Trace fossils are defined as fossils that preserve evidence of an organism's activity, not the organism itself. They are the only type of fossil on this list where the organism involved doesn't have to die for it to form. Trace fossils include footprints, burrows, nests, and trails. Trace fossils usually form when an organism makes an imprint, such as a footprint, a burrow, or a trail, made by dragging their tail on the ground in a substance such as mud or clay. The clay or mud then hardens around the imprint, preserving it for a long time after the organism leaves it behind. Trace fossils are incredibly rare because the organism has to leave the evidence in the right place at the right time, and then the fossil has to survive weathering and erosion. Dinosaur footprints are some of the most well-known examples of these types of fossils. And we finish off the list by talking about probably the strangest type of fossil, preserved remains. Preserved remains are remains that have been preserved in substances such as amber, tart, or ice. These are the rarest form of fossils, but preserve the most detail and information out of the six. Organisms preserved in amber are almost always insects. The insect would land on a tree, excreting sap, and get stuck in the sap. They would then be engulfed in the sap, which would harden after a while and prevent the insect from decaying. Think of the mosquito from Jurassic Park as an example. Organisms preserved in tar are those that were unlucky or dumb enough to get stuck in a tar pit and die there. It also wasn't uncommon for predators to get stuck as well when attacking prey already stuck in tar. The organism's remains would become covered by tar and would have been preserved for a long time. However, tar infamously doesn't preserve remains as well as amber and ice. Finally, organisms frozen in ice are mostly organisms that died in the last ice age. The bodies were trapped in ice or frozen soil, which slowed the process of decay and prevents scavengers from ravaging the remains. Preserved ice fossils are known to have intact skin and organs, which is what makes them so special. Most forms of preserved fossils, with the exception of amber, date back only a few thousand years since, despite the name, they don't preserve organisms for very long. So those are the six different types of fossilization. What is your favorite kind and why? Make sure to let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.